Hi, everybody. Um, okay, so here we are. Uh, Felipe Alou. So uh, here's another book review for you. So under ordinary circumstances, the odds of being struck by lightning are far greater than the odds of becoming a major league baseball player. And Felipe Alou's circumstances in 1955 were anything but ordinary. As a non-English speaking black athlete living in the Dominican Republic, Felipe was anything but the ideal candidate for success in the United States, especially during the height of the civil rights movement. This is Felipe's amazing true story of perseverance and determination to beat overwhelming odds and insurmountable obstacles to become one of the baseball's greatest players and managers. Written by Escrito por Carol Gab. Yes. Fluency matters. Um, um, so, yeah, I, the other, I, I read this all last week. It's an entirety during testing that we had state testing stuff. And um, in case you're wondering, everything's in the past tense. And uh, it's in third person narrative. Um, it starts off chapter one La República Dominicana um, in the market. Unisa Tropical. Yeah. So it talks about like uh, the Dominican Republic, off the bat, um, some characteristics of the island, and who the president, um, who, who the dictator was, El Dictador, se llamaba General Rafael Leonidas Trujillo. Whew, that's a long name. Um, you know, he was a rigid leader, oppressive and violent, right? So between 1930 and 1961, um, it was talking about how the Dom Dominican Republic was not paradise. You know, back between 30 and 61, right? Um, and, uh, yeah, so it talks about the history of uh, oppression, right? And the idea of the Haitians not able to, um, they didn't speak Spanish, they spoke Creole. So they had this pronunciation of, uh, you know, of Creole is different from the pronunciation of Spanish, right? And so, oh, in particular, they couldn't pronounce the word perejil, parsley, so when a Haitian would, you would pronounce parsley, perejil, um, it was obvious that they didn't speak Spanish and they weren't Dominican. So, you know, basically back in the day, ordered the, you know, the assassination of all Haitians that lived in the, Repu in the Dominican Republic and sort of in order to decipher who's who, you know, give them like per, um, perejil, right, along with other words, that, you know, and then it could tell, you know, if the Haitian, if the person from Haiti yeah, it was not Dominican, right? So, and it talks, I don't, you know, Felipe Alou, I, I, I knew who he was. Um, there's a picture of him as the manager there and, you know, him back in the, you know, 30s and 60s. So the whole the whole idea of this was like just taking, you know, how he came to the United States and didn't know any Spanish and had to sit on the back of the bus. And, and you know, it's talking about segregation that was happening in the United States. Okay, that's in here throughout the entire book. Everything's in the past tense, okay? So while Felipe was waiting in line, mientras Felipe esperaba en la fila, notó que los negros es que estaban adelante en la fila salían uh, con fruta y sándwiches. Okay, and then it talks about like places he couldn't get into, all right? Um, colored here, right, in that line. So it's a, lot, a lot of it's talking about segregation in the United States you know, within the story of uh, talking about Felipe Alou and what he had to uh, overcome and what he went through um, and he and things he just didn't understand because he didn't understand Spanish right or English right away. And uh, he became a manager and it talked about like his kids becoming, um, being on this team in which he managed, you know, the Giants. I don't know a whole lot of history about baseball, okay, but I did read it um, and I learned some things while reading this, you know, about like, you know, and obviously Dominicans are, um, you know, a lot of a lot of people in the N NLB, MLB, <laughs> are from, uh, you know, La República Dominicana and Venezuela, right, in Mexico, right, a lot of the, you know, Detroit Tigers, you know, a lot of rosters are full of, um, um, you know, Latinos and Cubanos, right, yeah. So it's all in the past tense. Okay, I thought it was a good book, very, very good. They all, a lot of these are all, a lot of the books, most books are, I think they're pretty good. Now, what, what would I do as far as like, uh, now, if you were to read a class set of this, okay, it's almost five minutes. These usually go to eight minutes. I got to cut this short in a, in a minute. When would I give this out? Because you basically kind of have to look at word count. It's obviously all in the past tense.
you know, I don't know. You know, teachers, it depends. I would say probably at least, sec- you know, by s- it's second semester of five days a week Spanish too. So second semester. This might be something like for second semester or even, you know, the, you know, the last class novel book you read with Spanish too, I would say. As a precursor, you know, of those who are getting ready for Spanish 3. Because it's in the past tense. So you have the imperfect, but it doesn't really matter. Obviously, you know, vivia, we know it's lived. It comes from vivir. So don't let that stump you because, you know, saying, oh, we can't read this because there's the imperfect tense in here. Well, it's a novel, so of course there's going to be the imperfect in here. I mean, it's going to be. So, um, you know, you can't just have a book that's just not the past tense, you know, just the preterite. So anyways, um, as far as silent sustained reading, maybe in second semester, well, you can just plop it in Spanish too, right at the beginning of the year on your library to read for silent sustained reading. You know, some students might flock to it, especially if they like sports and they like baseball and history, right? But yeah, as far as a novel goes, probably, you know, maybe the sixth, seventh month into Spanish too, I would say, I think. I don't know. If you think otherwise, you know, feel free and let me know. But this is just kind of my idea. Um, what I, yeah, I mean, I probably, I would. I, I would definitely buy a, a set of this book, you know. Definitely for Spanish 3. Yeah, I mean, I would go right into this in Spanish 3. First book for the, you know, first month if you're reading class sets, for sure. All right, well, I guess that's about it. We're going to keep these a little bit more short. Hopefully that kind of gives you some insight if you're thinking about buying Felipe Alou and what, you know, my you know, little level of experience with free voluntary reading and teaching comprehension stuff for the last 14, 15 years. So that's the best I can do. I, don't, I mean, I'm not an expert, you know, but that's, that's kind of my review. All right, so like I said, I'm just kind of doing these for fun a little bit anyway. But if you get anything out of this, it's awesome. All right, so it's seven minutes. All right, everybody, have a fabulous day and get, you know, smash that like button and subscribe. All right, adios.